Tim, something that we both just experienced that we might uh, talk about today that might be worthwhile to a number of people would be the alignment of someone's estate planning uh, wishes. And for example, they go have their will prepared with an attorney or perhaps they do it on their own and they name their beneficiaries, whatever that might be. And then at the same time, they might have 401ks or retirement accounts, IRAs, where they have also named beneficiaries. And typically it's fairly easy if someone is married and they have a spouse and they can just name their spouse as a primary beneficiary. And if only one dies, it works out pretty well. Everything goes to the spouse. Uh, as planners, we also like them to take that a step further, which includes naming contingent beneficiaries in the event that we would have both spouses pass. So that in that scenario, we would have our contingent beneficiaries already identified. And what we just saw recently was some inconsistencies with a client. Should we talk about that today? Yeah. There's a lot of considerations when you're talking about the estate planning and the beneficiaries for the accounts because you have to consider the probate, uh, what assets are probate, because probate can be driven by your will that you have had prepared by uh, an attorney. And you also have your retirement accounts such as IRAs or Roths, 401ks, 403bs, which pass on based upon the beneficiaries that you've elected on your account, such as your primary beneficiaries and contingent beneficiaries. So it's important to, to coordinate both your probate asset beneficiaries with your will, as well as your retirement asset beneficiaries on your IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, for example, so that your estate passes based upon your wishes. So one of the things that comes off uh, up fairly often, especially for our clients who are philanthropic, is they like to also uh, plan in their estate for some charitable giving. And when someone wants to give assets to a charity, we often will have the conversation uh, about whether or not they should identify charities as maybe primary or contingent beneficiaries on retirement accounts, such as IRAs, because those assets are income taxable to whoever receives them. So a charity doesn't pay income taxes. So when a charity receives part of an IRA, a percentage of an IRA, or um, a taxable account like that, uh, 401k, for example, then they would receive that. It's non-probate if they're named the beneficiary and there's no income tax on that. Um, sometimes what we see is people want to give specific dollars in their will to charity. So we look at that as a planning opportunity when someone's charitably inclined and has taxable retirement accounts, because we can um, review that to talk to them about possibly making the charities the beneficiaries on those taxable accounts, which frees up, you know, more tax favored kind of investments to pass to maybe individual beneficiaries. And, and in particular, we, we saw, and we've seen this a number of times, um, with Roth IRAs, those are tax-free assets that someone's worked really hard to build up and, um, you know, use some of the, play their tax brackets to build up Roth IRAs. And those are especially a great asset to pass for estate planning purposes because there's no income tax on that. So um, that would typically be something we review in a planning meeting. Yes, and to add on to that, also any non-qualified brokerage assets that, that you own receive a step up to your date of death. So any assets passing on to your beneficiaries uh, via the, the probate process uh, as a non-qualified asset would be stepped up to the fair market value on the date that you pass and would be uh, transferred over then to your beneficiaries basically they start off with a, a clean slate from a uh, capital gain perspective they don't have to worry about maybe all those capital gains that that you've had earned over the years now when they inherit those assets so i think there's um you know so much of what we do as planners when we're working with clients uh often they think it's just about the investments and it's just about the returns 
but when we start peeling back the onion of their financial life, and I love talking about the elements of financial planning, uh, when we look at cash flow, taxes, investments, retirement accounts, your risk management and your estate planning, when you're talking about trying to kind of coordinate some of this, it, it might look like you're handling their investments, but it also has an element of, um, of estate planning as well. And uh, really even some cash flow elements and tax elements when you're talking about passing it on to heirs. Because sometimes those heirs are children, Sometimes there are charities, as we mentioned, and sometimes there are other relatives. So it's about making sure it all works together. So I, those are the fun conversations we have. 